Unbelievable. What have I had? I've had over, just over a month to get from Kalgoorlie to Perth. One of my main um, objectives at the end of it is to be here at Mundaring Weir. And man, I just feel like I'm under the pump. <laughs> it's just incredible. I'm just meant to be taking it nice and easy, but uh, well, we got here at last and uh, managed to squeeze the van into a tight little uh, turnaround bay there, but uh, managed to get in. So um, yeah, there it is. There's the damn wall. I'm going to go up, um, have a look at the uh, the top of it first. So. It's quite fitting, I'm a few days late, but um, I think the pipeline is about 120 years old this year. So uh, it's a pretty good feat. So happy birthday, pipeline. It's still a bit tricky to come into these parks with a van, I tell you. And uh, wow. That looks like a reasonable amount of water out there. There it is. Mundaring Weir, or don't quote me, but the sign actually says that it's CY O'Connor Lake as well. So it's a lovely bit of uh, water source. And I say to think that that water travels all the way to Kalgoorlie, services hundreds, thousands of people. And uh, a drop of water from here takes nearly 11 days to get to Kalgoorlie. It's taken me three times that long to get here. <laughs> and oh, can you see it from here? Oh yeah, yeah you can see just over there, that would be number one pump house. And don't forget, on my journey, I think there was eight pump houses. Oh, this is so cool. You get goosebumps. It's really amazing. I haven't seen fresh water like this for ages. When you think of, um, what was it, Niagara, Niagara Dam, um, that really uh, strong salt water at uh, Bandy Lakes. That is beautiful, looks so inviting. Reminds me of the time when we were back in um, Lake Argyle as well. Dam and everything and uh, Beautiful big expanse of water. It's gorgeous. And there we go, that's the business end down there, that's the pump house. It's a good little spot to come, see a bit of history, it's an amazing bit of engineering, not only just the storage of water here, but getting it from here to nearly 600 kilometers east of here. about it my friends we have made it to the Mundaring Weir I'm sorry if I've bored the daylights out here um, uh, but yeah it's been a, a nice relaxing trip I've really really enjoyed it yeah. so there we have it 
thank you very much for following my journey to Perth. We'll give you a little bit of insight into Perth. Um, it's going to be fairly busy, got some friends and some family to catch up with. Um, but we'll uh, give you some of the, uh, the highlights and uh, the interesting things of Perth and bits and pieces I hope. And uh, at the moment, this is the end of my relaxing part of it. Now it gets a little bit stressful, so I've got to get accommodation, got to find um, where the van's got to be uh, parked up for servicing, find my way back to the accommodation. And uh, yeah, really from there I can take it a little bit easier. Um, and then we'll uh, see the return of Judy. She's going to be back, um, got about four days before I see her. And um, then we'll uh, start our little mission all over again. Well, good morning. Yep, uh, I'm on, the, on my way up to uh, the King's Park and uh, I'm going up a trail they call the Kokoda Trail and then you think with Kokoda in it, it usually means it's either uphill <laughs> or downhill never too much on the flat so yeah I'll go up here I'll be absolutely out of breath at the top I won't be able to get a word in so uh, meet you at the top alrighty if you're viewing this you know I've made it that was a good grunt. <laughs> Not too bad though. I suppose uh, that big bike ride I did uh, the other day sort of blew out the pipe, so I'm feeling pretty pretty happy about that. So yeah, where are we? Kings Park. And uh, I'm about to go over. There's a tour that starts around about 10 o'clock. And I think there's another one that starts around about 1 o'clock, I think it was. Don't go by that on me. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a nice little tour around these gardens and uh, see how, why, if, but. When I'll try and get back to you. All right, let's go and recover a bit. Well, well get my quick jiggy on as far as botany goes. <laughs> but yeah, it's quite an interesting little walk. The statue behind is the link between nature and uh, pollination and things. It's quite a nice little sculpture. Lots of eucalypts. The park, if you were to walk around the extremities of the park it's 21 kilometers around so it's, it's a big park it's actually one of the biggest one of the biggest inland parks I believe in the world as far as I've heard so uh, it's quite a special park to Perth because it, um, it gives it people a, uh, a place to retreat to without having to go too far and of course it displays a lot of um, uh, native flora and fauna from um, around Western Australia and also uh, abroad as well so yeah it's a pretty pretty huge place with some fantastic scenery which we'll show you soon so in this portion of the park there's a bloke John Forrest who was a premier and statesman Explorer and a surveyor. Um, he lived, uh, was it 19, uh, 1847 through to 1980, uh, 1918. So, uh, yeah, he was the first president of Kings Park. He actually planted uh, the first exotic tree here in 1895. So, right over here, you've heard it a lot, Walsy Matilda and the old swagman sat underneath a cooler bar tree. Well, now I know what a cooler bar tree looks like. Huge amount of leaves, huge amount of flowers. And it kind of, oh, look at the bees. Massive amount of bees. They love them in flowers. One of the big attractions to Kings Park is where we're coming up to now. It's the, uh, the glass bridge. Gives you a bit of a treetop walk. Let's see if we swing around, there it is. Gives you a bit of a treetop walk and a great view of the city. Popular spot. Pretty awesome little structure. 
and then so you've got the beautiful treetops on one side walking in amongst and then when we swing around over the top we get into the hump opens out into some beautiful cityscapes looking out over you know, Stirling Ranges and we've got the two rivers over I think on my left was the Swan and I think that's Canning on that side it's a wicked bridge there you have it the glass bridge uh, there you go too Swan Brewery There we go, coming off the glass bridge. Terrific view of the South Perth and the city. There's this cool structure that I used to um, visit when we used to come out here to Kings Park. It's called the DNA Tower. It's out the, uh, the back part um, of the park and uh, should get a relatively good uh, view, I think, of just the other side of the city. So. I'm a bugger for punishment, we're going grunt to the top. Let's see what it's all about, eh? The DNA structure is, is it circles two ladders up, one ladder up, one ladder down. And uh, yeah, she's pretty cool. Join me at the top. Here we go. Yeah, stone statue inside a, a French chateau. The appearance of the tower is similar to the DNA, hence its name the same. Uh, the stones and the paving and the walls surrounding the towers originated from shires and towns throughout Western Australia, symbolising that Kings Park and Botanical Gardens is for everyone to enjoy. Oh wow. At the top. So there we have it. Give my breath. So they say yeah, if you walk around the outside of Kings Park here, it's 21 kilometres around. I can see that now. Rockness Island. I suppose you can see it just there. Rockness Island through there is 26 kilometres away. Bang. Beautiful. Beautiful view. Homes back that way where we are uh, staying. Two kilometres as far as the crow flies. And then, yeah, we've got the Swan River over here. Canning, Canning River is what I was saying, that the two merge. And of course, your city sander out over that way. Looking good. Okay, now the easy stuff, going back down the stairs. That's the bit I like. Just on a different context of things, just walking back to the apartment. I don't know whether you can see that, but in the river, loads of jellyfish. Just sitting there, happily minding their own business. They're amazing. Alrighty, I know this will come across pretty loud, but what a vantage point here from the uh, one of the highway bridges to uh, get a good uh, gawk at the uh, city of Perth. There it is there, got some pleasure boats, doing some fishing, picking up some pots and uh, you got that in the, in the distance as you, as you enjoy. It's a midweek, um, beautiful day and um, yeah, I've just been doing a bit of uh, ferrying backwards and for forwards from the town doing me, me bike services but uh, yeah, got the, uh, got the, the ferry terminal up over there and uh, the little ferry just travels from one side of the uh, the river to the other and of course Kings Park's in the distance there's a great advantage point a uh, great vantage point from uh, Kings Park behind me and uh, it's a lot quieter but uh, yeah couldn't help but stop here and uh, have a gawk real pretty I think the hills that's the Stirling range I think in the distance there Back around to the city. We've got to, uh, got to have a bit of a shout out to uh, a few things that have happened today. 
um, they're not we're not a we paid for it all we're not sponsored by them or anything like that but uh, number one I uh, had an amazing amount of service from a bloke Tony over at the uh, the Trek Perth Central sort of the CBD and Hay Street um, the bloke bent over backwards fitted me in managed to service two bikes he was a uh, yeah, great customer service knew what he was talking about but we've had fun reliability and when it comes to after, after sales service top notch so that's when I called on Tony and uh, he was happy to do it too so uh, it's nice nice to see that going into one store you got that service but you go into another store you still got that service so well done number two I had a, um, a little uh, problem back in Kalgoorlie I um, got those Kings um, solar panels and uh, inverter well I had trouble getting it going but uh, they wanted to go a bit further send some photos I had I had some photos of the solar missing and they said hey listen uh, you know, switch out another panel which I'm thinking oh geez Kalgoorlie I, what am I going to do with another panel I've got this one going I mean I could put three panels on well anyway they never arrived and the, the, it got lost in the system in bits and pieces so I wasn't expecting too much but I thought oh well I'll test the bike out. I went for a 20k bike ride from town out to the nearest King's Adventure store and uh, the lovely girl there looked after me and said yeah yeah what's happened it's gone into a, a store it's gone into holding and then it's been yeah there's a, there's a glitch in the system that they never never got dispatched. Anyway I still see it's here you want your panel? I said well I don't really want a panel anymore, but uh, they managed to give me that credit of which I was able to then spend and store on something else I wanted. So, rambling on, talking along too much. The third thing um, we've just uh, heard from our um, A van, and they said the van's actually fine to pick up now. So, they've had it for two days, we expected four days. So, top effort, and the bill was. Um, very very good as well I wasn't uh, expecting uh, it as light as it was so I uh, fixed a few little problems of which yeah it was beyond the call of duty for them so thank you very much much appreciated that is Avan Premier Avan in Perth or out in Bassadine um, look them up if you're looking at buying a caravan or a, or a mobile home I, uh, I recommend them especially our Avan has been good I'd just like to say cheers. I'm back from Adelaide and excited about our trip this year. Yeah, in case you guys need reintroduce <laughs> me. <laughs> Reintroduction. This is my wife Judy, alright? She's been absent for the last month from my journey from Kalgoorlie to Perth. Yeah. And um, it's been a blast. I've absolutely enjoyed it, but there's been one thing missing. Me, me, <laughs> me. So, poor old Judy's been doing some babysitting duties in um, Adelaide. Oh no, I've been really, really, really enjoyed babysitting my grandies though. Did I say it was a mission or not? I said it was, <laughs> she was enjoying some babysitting duties. So, um, yeah, this is our first night back together and we're in Perth. And who could pick a better venue? Is the sun is going down over the skyline of Perth and we're here at, um, what are we, Mr. Walker. It's a little um, pier on the south side of Perth. Yeah. You can do a booking, it's online, and you can ask for a better spot to see the sun go down and watch the lights of Perth come out. And the weather is beautiful, absolutely lovely. Yeah. You got these right. Kangaroo and look at these. You got bugs and they look absolutely fine. That is not bad going. Okay, back at Jack. Alrighty folks. Yeah, short ass with me. Ah. That's short ass. Yeah, sure. That's Judy. Yeah, sure. With a croaky um, masculine voice. <laughs> Anyway, we just enjoyed a absolute amazing meal. Where was it? At? Mr. Mr. Walker's. Yeah. So beautiful. This, yeah, beautiful. You had the Morton Bay bugs. And they were so tender. They were absolutely beautiful. Highly recommended. 
Yeah, I know I had the uh, kangaroo, and the kangaroo wasn't too bad as well. It was, it was hopping. Ah. Yeah, it was hopping. But hey, how's that for an absolute gorgeous skyline of Perth City? I mean, whatever angle you see this place as, it pops. Well, there we are, leaving the Perth Mint, excellent um, exhibit, excellent place to come and visit um, and the fact that they allow videos and cameras throughout the entire lot, it was, it was neat to be able to, you know, preserve it in our memories, eh Jude, it was really good, really good, so uh, put it on your list of things to do. So thank you very much for following me on my journeys. I'm sorry I haven't bored. I'm sorry if I've bored the pants off you. 